I remember how much I wanted a 10-speed bicycle. That's the only reason I agreed to spend the days of that summer as a paid companion to an old woman named Lilith Adams. The woman's daughter was a friend of my mother's, but I hardly knew her. And how I dreaded going to Lilith Adams' house that first day. Jim, he's all show. Lord Jim? Lord Jim, this is Ellen. Ellen will be here with us for the rest of the summer. Now, pet him. He understands. I hope we can get along for 10 weeks. I hope so, too. I wasn't very nice to her at first, but I couldn't stand the idea of spending my whole summer with ancient Lilith Adams. Ellen! I didn't know what to say to her with her wrinkled skin, her phony silver hair, and her scratchy old woman's voice. Ellen! May I go home now? Is it five? Yes. You may go home. I was back the next morning earning my money, finding out that Lilith had a set time for everything. At 10, water the plants. At 10.30, tidy up the house. At 11.30, start lunch. I might as well have been in school, but I waged a secret war against Lilith by popping my bubble gum and cracking my knuckles. I wish I had my bike. It'd only take me five minutes to get here. Don't crack your knuckles. Where is your bicycle? I'm getting it at the end of August. Oh, that's interesting. I'm getting new screens in August. Aluminum. A present? The screens? No, the bicycle. Is it a present? A present to myself. I'm earning the money. Oh, I'm getting my screens at Fullerton Lumber. A present to myself. I earn money, too, you know. I'm not entirely useless. And I'm perfectly capable of taking care of... Taking care of what? Who? Who, not who. And besides, it's what. Screens are what. But you said... No, I want you to take this to the bank for me after lunch and make a deposit. The woman behind the window will tell you what to do. And mind you, don't lose it. Thank you. Next. Hi. Hi. Lilith forgot to endorse this check. Why don't you take it back so she can sign it? Next. The check was from my mother, made out to Lilith Adams. I knew then. Mother was paying Lilith to babysit me. And Lilith's daughter, Eunice, was paying me to take care of the old woman. I did. Did you look at it? My mother's paying you to take care of me, to look after me. Jessie can get a bunch of screens. 
I don't need any old screens. I've already got a house full. I, I hate this summer. Later, when I calmed down, I realized that Lilith also had been tricked. We'd both been lied to. Neither of us had a real job. You needn't come back tomorrow, you know. Screens can wait another year, and the bicycle, too. I guess it wasn't your idea. And it certainly wasn't mine. I would have had a better plan. Why don't you go home? It's almost five. It's only 4.30. What kind of a plan should we make? We? You, me, we. Who are we plotting against? Them. Eunice and my mom. Neither one of them told us the truth, and I don't think that's very nice. It is humiliating. But there are other words for it, love, concern, thinking that they know best. Maybe we should take the money and pretend like we don't know. That way I'll get my bike and you'll get your screens. Yeah, we can do that. The truce began the next day. I wrote the story about a girl detective. You did? Tell me about it. Well, it's about this girl detective on an island with the treasure that's supposed to be buried there. Well, keep right on going, my dear. I promised Mr. Cummings that I'd replace the button on his shirt. Well, anyways, this girl detective finds clues and solves the mystery and captures the murderer all by herself. Your story, how interesting. Why don't you sort the buttons in piles and keep them separate? What would be the fun? This way I'm always finding something I wasn't expecting. Your story reminds me of a book. Arthur Conan Doyle was the physician who used to write these detective novels while he was sitting in his office waiting for his patients. The Hound of the Baskervilles by A. Conan Doyle. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, who is usually very late in the morning, save upon those not infrequent occasions when he was up on the door just above the lock with the flat of his foot, and it flew open. Pistol in hand, we all three rushed into the room. Yes, time. You'd better run home. I'll call your mother so that she won't worry. Can we finish the book tomorrow? By all means. Maybe we can solve the mystery. I'll think it over tonight. Don't miss the clues. Sometimes they aren't easy to recognize. After Lilith finished the book, I surprised her by playing the piano. And from then on, in the long, boring hour between four and five, we took turns trying to surprise each other. But Wednesday afternoons were reserved for three-handed bridge. That's our trick, Maybelle. Good. With Maybelle and Grace. I'm sorry, Lilith, but I have... The Grace was Lilith's best friend. Grace is old money. What does that mean? Means she's always been rich. Are you old money? <laughs> poor. <laughs> Land poor. But you can be rich in other ways. Has Grace always been your friend? 
Well, I've known Grace since she was a girl. At 17, she was everything I'd wanted to be. But I've had happiness that Grace has never known. Things have a way of leveling out if you live long enough. Shoes. Forgot them. Of course. I don't see what's wrong with their feet. Nasty habit. Mrs. Parsons? Shall we go now? I guess so. That Mrs. Parsons is a fine woman. Manages that place all by herself since her husband died. Fine, fine woman. Where are we going now? Well, I thought maybe we'd go over that bench and rest a while before going home. Would you like that? Oh, my. It's nice to sit down, isn't it? Sure is hot. Are we going to stay here very long? Not very long. About the hottest day of the year, I bet. You wanted it very much, didn't you? Wanted... what? Don't make me say it for you. We can walk back to the store and tell Mrs. Parsons. For what? That we want to return something we didn't pay for. Will you say it for me? You'll say it. It will be hard, but not too difficult. Shall we go now? Did you forget something? Yes, we did forget something, Mrs. Parsons. Ellen wishes to tell you about it. We, I mean... I, I took a pearl ring. I want to give it back. Won't do it again. Ellen, you may put that back where you found it. Now, Mrs. Parsons, I would like to buy a ring, a birthstone. Oh, what month did you have in mind? June. June. That would be pearl. Exactly. We'll take it. The ring is yours, Ellen. It's your birthstone. One afternoon, we went to the nursing home to see Lilith's friend, Maddie McDonald. Why do they call it Twilight Meadow? Because people think in metaphor. Twilight is the time between sunset and dark. Oh, not much meadow, though, around here, huh? No, not much meadow. May I help you? I came to see Maddie McDonald. McDonald? 
She's out of the infirmary now, I believe. McDonald. Can't always keep track of room assignments. I turn over, you know. Oh, yes, she's been put in 13 West. Thank you. by metaphors? Calling something, but it isn't. But that's lying. No. Sometimes it's better that way. You know, your eyes are just like your grandmother Phoebe's. Maddie? I'm glad to see you, Maddie. It's Lilith. Lilith, I brought you some homemade peanut clusters. You better keep them hidden. You're not supposed to have them. Oh, you've got a new gown. How pretty. Thorin brought it to me. Thorbin? Comes to see me every day. Of course he does, Maddie. He Loves you very much. Who's that? It's my Ellen. Ellen takes care of me, and I take care of Ellen. Is that a car? Thorben's coming today to take me home. He, he promised. Yes, we, we'll be going now, Maddie. We'll be back real soon. Later, Lilith told me that Maddie's husband, Thorben, had been dead for 15 years. I'm here! It's break step day. Break step day? It's a day for sleeping until noon or getting up at four to watch the sunrise. It's a day, Ellen, for doing what you want to do when you want to do it. What do we want to do? We're Packing a lunch and settling up the lake. One day, Lilith's niece, Gertrude, came to visit. Lilith had described her as a great one for order, straightening curtains, moving furniture around, and things like that. I was just in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd pop by and see how you're getting on. Oh, dear. You see, I knew you were going to have to have someone come over and help you. And uh, how have you been getting along, Aunt Lilith? I'm fine. Can't you see? capable of taking care of myself, no matter what you and you miss think. Aunt Lilith, you're 77. You can't keep on living here like this. Winter's coming, and Twilight Meadows is a lovely place. I don't need a lovely place. I need a loving place. What will people think of us, letting you live here like this? What if something happens? Something always happens. That's life, Gertrude. You have to be realistic. I'm going to die right here in my own home at 218 Lake Street. Well, who's this? Mabel Groves' girl, Ella. Lilith takes care of me. Has she been listening? Ellen was reading, weren't you, Ellen? Ellen hears only what she reads. Well, I have to make a noon luncheon. We'll talk about this again, Auntie. Will she be back? In the winter, maybe. You know, I'm afraid of faces. Grown-up faces. My face, too? Not yours, it's just, I don't know where to look. 
when people are looking at me? You should look at the eyes. The eyes are the nicest part of the face. The eyes are the real person looking out. I don't suppose you're frightened of anything anymore? I'm afraid of being alone. Not being alone as much as being left alone. Not being of any use to anybody. Not being needed. Of needing to take, but not being able to give. Of nobody wanting what I have to give. I wanted to say many things to her that day, but I didn't know how. the chores. The house was empty. The day dragged on. How could Grace have died? I'd seen her just the day before, and she was younger than Lilith. We'll be alone then. This is the only dress I have that fit. It should be black. It's exactly right. A funeral is a celebration. It was nice. The service. I suppose so. Is it hard to die? No. Hard to live. Lilith, have you ever saw you did something? I mean, if you could change things, would you do them different? I wouldn't change the big things. I would the little. I'd throw out the clocks, kick off my shoes, I might even forget who and whom. Summer was over. I had my bicycle. show it to you and, and to say goodbye. The flies are simply awful this year. You're uh, moving to a new city. Yes. And a new school. It'll be different and exciting. I'll run my bike to school every day. I don't 
know how to say goodbye. Oh, goodbyes are silly anyway. Don't mean a thing. I guess not. Summer gone, autumn near, winter soon. The summer went sort of fast, didn't it? Yes. Yes, it did, Ellen. For both of us. Funny. At first, I thought it'd never end. No good looking ahead. Just relax and let it wash over you. I learned a lot. You did? I know what a metaphor is. And the summer wasn't wasted. We haven't even studied them in school yet. Well, think of how far ahead you'll be. All right, you might get to Minneapolis. You do that. I tried to think of more words, but I'd run out of things to say. Goodbye, Lord Jim. I'm going to miss you something awful. Thanks for the summer. Goodbye, Ellen. my first year in college, I received a letter from my mother. Inside was a newspaper clipping. It said simply that Lilith E. Adams, 84, had passed away at her home at 218 Lake Street. I remember that one day I asked Lilith what the E in her name stood for. She replied, Everlasting, Ellen. Everlasting. Mm -hmm.